Hello everyone, greetings and namaste. My name is Luki Liger. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'm here with my very distinguished guest, Dr. Arne Holland from Norway. And he's a very special guest because he's actually the founder of Arca Meditation. And this is the 50th anniversary of Arca Meditation. Thank you, Dr. Holland, for gracing my talk show. And welcome to, back to Singapore again. Right? Could you tell the audience who may not be familiar with who you are a little bit about yourself and your background? Well, I'm a medical doctor of training and I have specialized in psychiatry. I'm also a psychologist by training and I worked both as a psychotherapist and also as a university professor training uh, the doctors of the future in my own country. Wow, excellent. How long have you been doing this? Um, since I was uh, young. young. Um, I <laughs> You're still young. <laughs> uh, well, yes. That's a question of discussion. Yes. Um, I started with yoga when I was mm. 16 years old and it meant a lot to me. Yeah. And then I started to meditate when mm -hmm. I was 17 mm -hmm. and I was working with different kinds of meditations over the years and finally arrived at this Arkham meditation which I think is a very sound and good uh, kind of practice. And uh, what characterizes it is that it's um, non-cultic, there's no guru, there is no religion, mm. there is no um, uh, uh, metaphysics involved. We are basing our teaching on scientific understanding from psychology, from psychiatry, from physiological understanding. We have also carried out scientific research which has been published in high prestigious journals about the effect of this uh, meditation. So we find that we are on a fairly safe ground in recommending it to people all over the world. Yes, I think you have the extra benefit that you have experienced both in psychiatry and psychology. And in fact, a lot of people mix up these two disciplines. Could you perhaps briefly tell us what's the difference between psychology and psychiatry? Well, that's not a clear division line there, but to make it very simple, psychiatry is when the mind is uh, sick or deviating, while psychology is more both the normal and the less normal aspects of the psyche, the workings of the psyche. Yeah, so like psychology is more like behavioral science, human behavior. Could be, yes. And psychiatry is more about like mental illness or, or states of mind. Uh, yeah, not like just states of mind, but mm -hmm. when it's, uh, it's pathological, when it's troubling the person. Mm, I see, I see. Well, how does uh, Arkham medication differ from other modalities or other forms of medication? Because there's so many out there, yes. right? Well, one of them is that this is a secularized mm. teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are using a sound. Mm -hmm. We don't call it a mantra. Uh, and the reason why we don't call it a mantra, uh, the object of our meditation, is because it doesn't have any meaning, it doesn't have any symbolic representation. It's the quality of the sound that influences the nervous system and changes the workings of the nervous system so that the person is relaxing physically in the body mentally yes. and we have looked at this in scientific studies also so we can see that the brain changes from regular kinds of brain activity to alpha activity we have looked at it in fMRI seeing that the default network of the brain takes over which shows that the brain is at rest. And we have compared this technique which is not based on concentration but on the opposite, what we call a free mental attitude. And we have compared the effects of having a free mental attitude in the repetition of the sound with a concentrated way of doing it and the benefits from the free mental attitude is considerably higher. The, there are bigger areas in the brain that are involved in the resting activity when the mind is given this free mental attitude. Right, that's very fascinating. You know, could you t share with some of the uh, positive uh, benefits of Arkham meditation as well as perhaps one or two stor transformational stories 
of patients or clients that you have? Um, yes. Uh, first of all, people relax. They de-stress. Mm. And uh, on um, measurable, uh, measurable uh, parameters, that is clearly seen. The oxygen consumption goes down, the tensions of the muscles go down, the um, uh, blood pressure is not much but a little bit uh, lower uh, when people practice this meditation and also after having yes. practiced it. In addition to that, uh, people feel refreshed, they have more energy, they have more stress tolerance. And you know, when it comes to stress, some people get very easily stressed. Indeed. And yes. other people are not that easily stressed. But when stressed, it takes a while before you go down to a normal level of activity. Mm -hmm. And if you practice this meditation, we have demonstrated that you quicker readapt to a normal level. So the reason, you know, the, uh, the, the stress lingers on is, is not so uh, likely to be the outcome for people who, you know, otherwise stress a lot and tend to stay in that stress when they first are stressed, even though the stressful situation is past, is over. I see. Could you share with a story of uh, uh, perhaps a many story? Stories. Yeah, many stories. I'm sure many you pick your favorite one. Yes, I'll yeah. pick you. Pick one. Uh, this was a person. She was very deeply disturbed. Um, she had been to all kinds of treatments, medication. She had been on antidepressant. She had mm. been to psychoanalysis. She had been to other kinds of. You tried everything, basically. Yeah, she yeah. she is one of those who mm. tried everything, and then she came to this meditation, wanted to learn it, and she learned it, but couldn't get it. So she was struggling with it, and mostly people, you know, take this like that. It's not difficult to learn the basics. Mm -hmm. But she had difficulties, which of course, in hindsight, is due to some of the things that she was wrestling with in her life. Yes. Uh, but after three weeks, without giving up, she suddenly got it and started to relax. And uh, she then all kinds of troubled things came up and were dealt with. And she was going through a process that lasted quite long and after that she was completely changed and that lasted for the rest of her life. So she was very thankful I'm sure she was, for yes. this meditation, having seen so many doctors, in addition tried so many quack mm -hmm. healers and whatnots, and this was the thing that finally put her straight. Now, when I say that, this is a sunshine story, and I cannot promise that everyone who is, pro is troubled uh, will have this kind of effect. But she had that, and some people will have. But meditation, in the Arkham sense, is not for treatment, it's not therapy. It's for the normal, stressed human being who want to develop a better life, have a higher quality of life, and also who wants to gain some more psychological <clears throat> insights into the workings of their own uh, psyche and be more reflecting about what's the essence of existence, why am I here and all these things and all of those things are being supported by this kind of meditation. Okay. As the founder of Arkham Meditation, why do you choose the word Arkham? Is there any significance to this word or name? No, it's a constructive word. Uh, we use a sound meditation and uh, it is a sound that is uh, suitable for meditation, so we choose the name Arkham Meditation. Alright, beautiful. Yeah. Well, actually, when you describe your, your modality, uh, it kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Transcendental Meditation. Yes. How does Arkham Meditation differ from Transcendental Meditation? Well, uh, first of all, Transcendental Meditation is related to a Guru cult of Maha, Maharshi yes. Mahesh Yogi. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and there is a Hindu orientation mm -hmm. involved in it. We have nothing of that. Mm. Um, secondly, they use mantras, which are uh, Hindu uh, gods, either known or unknown. Uh, while we use sounds, which does, uh, which do not have meaning in any context. And if they have, it's it's beyond oh, our it's that top. Yeah, yes. okay. it's beyond our understanding <laughs> and knowledge. Mm -hmm. So that's an essential difference. We use transcendental meditation when they interpret the meditational experience. They try to uh, go into uh, the experience in a very different way. We do it from a psychological point of view and try to see the psychological processes involved which is not the case with the transcendental meditation. So, and that, I think, ties back to our scientific orientation, our, uh, and my background as a psychologist, psychiatrist, and uh, research-oriented person. Right, it's more of a scientific approach. Yes. Mm, I love it. Yes. So it's good for people who you know, are seeking for non-religious affiliated kind of uh, relaxation and distressing meditation technique. I fully agree, but also, this is also for religiously oriented people, but they don't have to worry from which side they come. This can be practiced and by it anyone. is by Muslims, by Christians, by rationalists who don't believe in any yes, divine... It is, you know, it's right. completely universal. Yes. yes. So I think that's a great advantage mm -hmm. in modern society that we have an approach that doesn't divide people. Yes, yeah, very neutral. Yeah. Right, I, want, I love that, you know, it's unity conscious. Uh, it can be practiced by literally anyone, regardless of their belief system or, whether, or even if they have no belief system. Right. right? It's fair to all. Yes. yes. Okay, Dr. Boland, can you tell us a little bit of um, what are some of the upcoming projects that you are working on right now? Okay, um, I think you mentioned it at the outset yeah. that we are having a 50 year, years yes. anniversary this year mm -hmm. and related to that we are on the uh, 29th of January having a World Meditation Day so people all over the world are meditating mm -hmm. together and uh, these uh, uh, who are practicing our meditation. Then we have a series of lectures in, uh, in the uh, country of origin for Arkham, uh, which are open to the public to about different aspects of meditation. And the big event is the world retreat in Spain, in the Pyrenees, north in Spain, not at the coast, but up in the mountains. We're going to have uh, meditators from all over the world porter into that uh, place, a beautiful place in Spain. People can even come if they want to learn to meditate there, but it's mostly for people who've been practicing for a long time. And uh, we have uh, um, booked six hotels there, high mountain hotels, and we expect them all to be quite oh, full. Yes, indeed. Yes. Hey, it sounds very exciting. Where can my audience go to to find out more about Arkham, about yourself, or to sign up with one of your classes or attend the, the, the retreat? That you, you just mentioned. Instead. Yes, we give courses here mm -hmm. in Singapore. We don't have a permanent center here. So if they uh, go to the Arkham, A C E M dot E N for India, or Arkham, A C E M dot com, they will find more information about it. Yes. Right, I'll be placing these links below this video, so feel free to click on them and you know check it out for yourself right they're also available not just in singapore but all over the world in the center that's near you all right thank you again dr Colin, for appearing on my talk show and sharing the rest about your meditation technique and i wish you all the best much success and congratulations again here's the next 50 years <laughs> all right thank you guys for watching this video feel free to subscribe to my youtube channel for more interesting and exciting videos to come